Listen, scripting is great until it doesn't work and it's kind of hellish. So Azimuth is supposed to come here and save us from all this hell. So I want to try it out and maybe let you know my experience with that so far. So first of all, what it is. So Azimuth is actually a shiny app demonstrating a query reference mapping algorithm and for single cell data. So it can perform normalization, visualization, cell annotation, and differential expression for biomarker discovery. And the results are easily downloaded for additional downstream analysis without the need of any code, any script, or any R package installation, right? So one of the important distinction between the normal Sura pipeline is that it doesn't use the PCA and UMAP for unsupervised clustering process. So, but instead it uses it maps your data onto a reference data set to identify the identity. So to understand this, you can compare the idea of assembling a whole new human genome versus mapping new sequences onto a reference genome. If you have a good reference ready, this type of processing could be a lot more accurate while being faster and less resolve intensive. So I understand that this is not a be all and end all. So it's not like you have a Zemo, you can throw all your R away, but it's more like you are a um, student or supervisor and you just want to see a result from like an analysis and you just want to understand what's inside without actually going through the process of all the R dependency, hell and so on. Or you might be someone working for a sequencing company and you want other people to visualize their result and understand their own result with, without asking you too much question on you know, the maintenance of the R environment. So how you do that is you go to this website, which I'm going to link it in the video description down below called azimuth.hub mapconsortium.org and you'll be greeted by something like that. At this moment of time, there's eight different reference that you can map it to. So if your data comes from eight of this uh, human organ or mouse organ, you can actually use it directly. If not, you might need to wait a little bit. Uh, they're actually developing more according to their documentation. So the first thing I do is actually go to the learn more right here, which I'm going to go in here. So the learn more actually have a lot more information of the timing of where they construct the reference and the demo data set that we'll be using them later for each of the uh, date sample type over here. So this is uh, developed in 2020 with a demo data set from 2019 and so on and so forth. So once you are ready with all the information, you can also go into something like a cell type one so you can actually see all the biomarkers they use to identify every single type of cell and what are the ontology id that they are and you can again go deep into the ontology to actually understand the different type of cell type and so on so my internet's a bit slow for this one yeah but there's a lot more information here you can look into so once you're ready you can just press go to app right here and it should bring you to something like this yeah oh stop working uh, that's perfectly normal. So let's just go to app right here. Well, after waiting for about 10 minutes, um, the human PBMC app is still not working. However, human mortal context is actually currently working. So how Azimo works is there's not much you can do at this moment of time, but you can just upload your own file or load a demo data set. So for uploading, you can choose between 10x genome H5, Surat object, SRDS, uh, H5AD, H5 Surat, or matrix or you know, data frame as RDS object. So all of them work, but uploading a Surat will be the most um, confirmed that you work. So I'll recommend you to upload your object if you can. So just choose your object and I'm going to show you how to create them later. But for now, I'm going to load a demo data set to actually just for it to run. And again, because you're not running on your own computer, uh, it might take some time. And if you are uploading a big file, it might actually take more time again for you to do so. Once the upload finished, you'll be greeted with something like that, where you can actually adjust the minimum count of and maximum count of the nRNA. So you, I usually go for the log scale Y exists and then actually adjust based on that, based on the, the violin curve. So in this case, I might want to go for, what is the minimum count? It's 30,000 and the maximum count is 39,000. Actually, that's not good. So yeah, I, we can go for like the 25%. And we can go for the 75% here for very, very strict uh, filtering of the data. Or you might actually adjust based on what is your tolerance between that one, two, three, four, five. And this one is one, eight, nine, 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 nine. So yeah, so so just make sure that you include as much data as you can for the 
for for the whole for to include most of the data set within the violin plot and you can actually adjust based on what you see afterwards so you can also again again adjust based on the number of features which i think is happy for now and i'm gonna map to the cluster the cross free cluster and once you have choose all the normal qc filtering process sorry qc filtering parameters you can just map self to reference and you actually start the mapping of the data onto the reference product okay so once the the clustering process is finished you can see the number of cell being uploaded number of cell after the filtration the number of cell with anchors that can actually map confidently and the number of cluster preservation score 5.5 to 5 that's the maximum score that's great if it's not uh, maybe just figure out the, the pre-processing process. So maybe that will make a little bit of a difference. And pu after that, uh, Pullman PBMC is still down, so I'm not able to do it. So uh, after you have done all the clustering process, you can go to cell plot and actually have a look at what are the different metadata to cluster. And you can have a look at how the cell are being clustered onto a different type of classification in this case. So they're either cell type, they're either different classes and they're different cross species clusters and so on so i'm not really familiar with this organ specifically so maybe some people you can actually comment down below what what do they actually represent I understand the first one of different cell type so beside that you can also um color sorry you can do the meta color metadata coloring for example i want a uh, donor sex and maybe cluster just to have a different look at this is male and female and that different type of cluster and multiple kind of, for example, region, maybe just put another region to see there's M1, UM, and UL, and you can actually just color it based on different metadata that you have. So of course, this will however much that you have inside a serial object. And if you want to have it here, you have to add it into a serial object before you upload it. Okay, so the last one is a meta table table, which is actually similar to what we see above, just in a, in a table form. So that's easier to export the data to explain the data or do any kind of um, further meta analysis that you want so i believe the useful one here is actually the feature plot where you can actually have different kind of feature in this case they are just gene but you can actually see that this gene pv alb is only expressed in like this lower right lower left cluster right here and you can also color it based on for example the prediction score of oligo and you should be very specific to this cluster and so on and so forth. And we can also go for, for example, cluster and different kind of, yeah, different kind of thing on prediction score, subclasses and so on and so forth. So again, you can also group by, for example, donor sex and what kind of count is in both male and female. You can also see that what kind of um, count is in different kind of region. ML, M1LM and M1UL and so on. And you can actually have like a predicted cell type cluster marker. So these are the, actually the, the what's it called differential gene expression um, that I talked about before. So for example, I want to look at the classes of mm, glutamatergic. So what are the cell marker that can identify this class? And you can actually see these are the RNA biomarkers and these are the PHRs and they are confidence level and so on and so forth. So my favorite part of Azimov is actually here, the download result, where you can actually download the analysis script template as a R, R script, and you can download the UMAP as a serial reduction RDS, and a predicted cell type as score, which is what we see in the table above, where you can do a drop down. But the, the most important part is the analysis script template, because Azimuth, I believe, is not created as a be all and end all, is that this is the thing that really can replace R completely, but rather it serves as a front end for people to explore the data, and once they get comfortable with it, they're able to, you know, um do the further downstream analysis without with less problem so I, I would say it makes the data a little bit more accessible to common folks so once you download the analysis template you look somewhat like that so i'm not going to go deep into the code but what the code is trying to do is uh, what you actually see just now it do the transfer cell that i will apply and by running this code you should be able to get all the plots that you were uh, you being you able to create inside the App just now just that now you can actually do more customization such as the label size the point size you know the the coloring and the you know do a VHS and HHS and so on and so forth just to fit uh, 
your paper and so on. I, I would say the most important actually just to export the PNG or PN or, or T file, the image file in a higher resolution required by the publication file, which you cannot do that in the, the app over there. So once you've done that, I also include a short script for you to install Asimov as well as how you actually create a serial object to be uploaded onto the web app. So for Asimov, it's a bit more complicated because you actually have to update this two package. And for the Windows user, you have to actually have to install something called R2 because some of the package needs local compilation. Yeah. Okay. So after you've done that, you also have to install remote because at this moment of time, Asimov is not available in CRAN or by a conductor. So you actually have to install it through the GitHub page with this command right here. So after you've done that, you can go and load your Surat and Surat data library into our environment. And you can have a look at what data is available in the Surat data library. So when you actually install the package, because the data set is actually quite big, uh, it's, it doesn't automatically download all the data set onto your own computer. They just give you an index on where to download them. So for example, if I want to do kidney references here, or I want to do IFNB over here, I actually have to install those data, which will actually pull the data from their server onto my computer. Then only I'm able to use the load data functions here to actually load in PBMC3K onto my computer. I'm using PBMC3K here because it's the smallest one and for purpose of video, it's able to be run while I'm actually recording. Okay, so once you've done that, you can just load in, actually I'm, I'm supposed to just save the RDS object directly and I can actually use this RDS file directly to be uploaded to the server. So for those that are wondering, you can actually download this script as well as the RDS that I created inside my GitHub page. So you can actually go in, try to find this folder, and you should be able to download all this thing and run the Asimov website directly. So for those that are feeling a little bit more ambitious that or do not want to rely on the website, you actually can just launch Asimov as a local Shiny app like that. And you should have similar function on what you have. For example, look in the data set, understand what to load in, and you can actually do all this thing later on. However, uh, at this moment of time, I'm not going to recommend any one of you to go in and run unless you know what you're doing or you are interested in the troubleshooting process because I have not been able to get it to run on my own, own computer and I'm not too sure exactly why. And yeah, that's just something that I, I need all of you to know. And that's basically the whole thing. And you can actually see the Asimov reference once my R have finished crashing. Yep. Okay, so in Asimov, you can also see these are some of the available data that you can actually use inside Azimo and this current and this moment of time. And on the time on this video, it's only eight of them, but I'm sure that they'll update it maybe a week, two weeks, two months when you actually find this video and watch it. <laughs> so so at this moment of time, Azimov is a great web application that currently have like eight different references that you can mod into. It, it does help a lot in avoiding the package dependency hell, the installation, the maintenance, the updating of all the packages and all the tools underneath it. I think it's a tremendously useful tool for people starting out with sRNA, where maybe you work in a clinical studies and you just want to get some genes that you can do your wet lab and and you know uh, PCR on. I, I think it's a very very useful tool for the communication. But for anyone that just that actually are involved in the bioinformatics analysis. I don't think that is enough because you can't do integration. The filtration way is very primitive. The, the custom, customization of the figures are also quite primitive. And I, I think there's a long way to go for it to be completely useful. But um, at this moment of time, it's, it's a tremendous addition to this uh, analysis ecosystem that I will cause you right now is huge. Uh, I think it's great. So that's all I, I think I have to say for now. I have to say thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. And if you do have any update on the tool when you use it, uh, just leave a comment down below and maybe we'll figure it out and see actually how it grows across the few months. It's still very, very new. Okay, bye.